Hey there, Smo Master D coming at you with another episode of Barbecue Buyer's Guide. Today we're going to be looking at two new contenders, uh, the TMG Volunteer and the Lone Star Grills Texas Edition. And as usual, we're going to be comparing it to the smoker that I view as sort of the golden standard uh, of this field, the Workhorse Pits 1975. All right, and I have some chapter times here, just in case you want to skip around, skip ahead. Uh, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I put out uh, barbecue-related content pretty frequently, uh, and I hope you like it. And, you know, I made this episode, I'll put a link up at the top, the Barbecue Buyer's Guide uh, to competitors of the Workhorse Pits 1975. It's a pretty popular video. Uh, and I didn't include these two when I made it. Now, the Volunteer was around then. Um, it is actually slightly outside of the parameters. It has a chamber that's even larger than the 120 gallons that I made the, the cutoff point. Now, I could have made an exception. Uh, I didn't, uh, which is why I get to make this video. Now, the Lone Star Grills... Uh, Texas edition was not a thing when I made this this first video. It has since been made. I think it's only you know a couple months old now. Uh, it is very different from the Workhorse Pits 1975, uh, and I'll get into a little bit of that as we go on. But yeah, I don't know that I would have included it in this video either, just just because it is so different. You can look at it and you can tell that it, it's different, and we're gonna we're gonna explore that sound. All right, and here we have our maps. So Lone Star Grills, of course, is a little north of Houston. Workhorse Pits is there close to Atlanta. They're going to have a new campus location, but it will still be in Georgia. And then the Metal Guys, they're up there in Tennessee. So I like to show people these maps just because uh, the shipping will play an important cost to uh, you know, the price that you're eventually going to pay for one of these smokers. Just something I like to give you all uh, to help you keep keep those things in mind. All right. And one thing I did want to mention is that Workhorse Pits does have an economy shipping plan, which may uh, be another factor in all of this. This is the map that they use. So they have different price points for each of these colors. Uh, and... You know, they have a chart for those prices. I'm not going to include it here. But if you are interested in buying from them, definitely look look that option over. All right, so we're going to take each of these uh, aspects uh, for all three at the same time. We're starting with price. So if we take a look at the volunteer, the base price is $4,499. Uh, it comes pretty much as is. There aren't any options so that's you know the full price the 1975 base price of 2784 now i equalized it for the uh tmg uh by adding the top rack and the side cart so you know the fold-up shelf and the top rack are all included for the volunteer um but that price for the workhorse pits is three thousand thirty three dollars so about 1500 more for the volunteer. It's a, a little bit bigger. We're going to get it to that in a few slides. Um, now, the Lone Star Grills Texas Edition, 48-inch. Uh, they have a 40-inch, but we're specifically looking at the, the larger size, the 48-inch, the one with the eight extra inches. Now, this picture here, I don't actually think it's the 48-inch. I think it's the 40-inch. But they didn't have any pictures of a larger size, so we're just going to have to use it as a representation. Um, but in your mind, you know, imagine it being a little bit bigger. Uh, at least that's what I think. So um, that it's the, the smaller one in the picture. But the 48-inch uh, has a base price of 3590 If you add uh, the full top rack, that's going to be 3635 and um, when you add only the top rack for the workhorse pits, it's going to be two thousand eight ninety five. So it is actually the Lone Star Grills is more expensive uh, by the tune of about seven hundred dollars or so. 
So, um, yeah, the workhorse pits is the least expensive option here. We're going to have to take a look and see are the other two, is there anything about them that makes it worth the extra money? So let's look. All right, so let's take a look at these cooking racks. So for the, the metal guys, both of the cooking racks are pullout. Now, the one thing about having uh, a pullout rack for your bottom rack is that it can only be the size of the door, right? So, um, you know, you're, you're leaving behind about three or four inches on either side. Uh, so that is it, is, it is a thing. Um, to consider when when you're doing these smokers uh you know a lot of people like the pullout rack uh you know it makes it e a little bit easier to get to the meat especially if you have that front shelf you know uh trying to reach over it you know being able to just pull the meat out can be nice it does have reinforcement on the lid there uh, there is a uh you know these lids they do warp some if you don't have that now, the workhorse pits, what they do with their lids is that they re-roll them. They have a machine, they re-roll the lids so that they are back to the correct uh, angle, whatever that is, circumference, I don't know what you call it, uh, so that they will, you know, be in place right the way they should without those reinforcements. So they do that. Um, you, you can see the picture there, only the top is pulled out. They add extra thermometers if you do get that top rack, so you have four in the door um, if, if that's the option you go with. Lone Star Grills, they, they have that half rack in the top that you see. You can get the second half rack for an extra $45. Imagine most people would do that. Um, you know, I don't know how often you would cook on the top racks, but just having it, you know, is, is something that's good. So I think, I think a lot of people will do that if they get this one. All right, and let's take a look at these inches. So uh, one thing to note is that the volunteer's cook chamber is 27 by 52. So that extra three inches, you know, could be important. It could be an important factor. You could probably fit, you know, more briskets or you wouldn't have to trim your briskets as much to get them to go, you know, just straight across the chamber there for you if you wanted to fit quite a few in there. The space that you do have in in this volunteer is a little bit differently shaped than what you have in the 1975. And even cutting off those four inches on either side of the rack, you still have the exact same number of square inches to the 1975. So uh, 1,092, 1,092. Strangely enough, this Lone Star Grills, which looks smaller, partly because, as I said, I think it's it's the wrong picture. Uh, it actually is going to have the most space uh, for uh, inches squared. Now, so that bottom rack, uh, 1,104, not a, a huge amount extra. Uh, you know, the the top racks is, is where it's actually going to make the most difference. So 756 for the volunteer on the top rack, 607.5. And then for the Lone Star Grills, 506 just for that half rack. If you add the second, it's going to be 1,012 extra square inches. Uh, and you see that the Workhorse Pits actually has the least amount of space overall than these other two. Uh, and I'm not going to break it down dollar per square inch, uh, but you can pretty much guess how it would go. You would still be doing the best with the 1975 just because it's it's the cheapest. Um, but, you know, is is that the extra money for either of these two worth it to you for for this extra space? Another thing to think about, you know, is is how high up these are versus I think uh, the Lone Star Grills, you got about six inch clearance to the second rack, which six inches is usually, you know, fine, right? But also, if you have uh, these racks uh, all the way up to the edge of the curve of that barrel, it's going to make it so you can't really use it as as effectively or put anything larger there right next to the barrel. Um, so uh, I think that these are, uh, you know, they're comparable in, mostly, uh, you know, just having that the extra few hundred inches on the Lone Star Grills, I don't know if it's going to make 
the biggest difference to how much you're going to cook or be able to cook. So, you know, just take it all with a grain of salt, but I like to give you all the numbers. So metal thickness uh, helps retain heat, keep keep the heat in the chamber. You know, when you close that door, helps it get back up to what it should be with the, the radiant heat coming from the metal. Uh, so, you know, one, a quarter inch for the volunteer, quarter inch is the, the gold standard. They put a full three eighths in the firebox, three eighths both for the firebox and the main chamber for the 1975 and quarter inch all the way around for the Lone Star grills. Uh, so, uh, you know, the workhorse pits comes out on top here, uh, and, uh, another eighth of an inch of metal, you know, how, how much better is that? I don't know, but it is better. All right. We're going to take a look at the back door here. So, uh, air control via back door, the volunteer has a chud style bracket there. And you're just using the door for your damper. A lot of people, even the people who have the workhorse pits, they like to do it that way. Um, it has the bow tie damper there. A lot of them just like to not use that and just use uh, the door. The The chud style bracket um, helps with, you know, how much air you want. You can set it on each of those different levels. Uh, I like it. A lot of people like that. Uh, you know, some people even make that. Uh, second hand to put on to their smokers so i think it's a good touch uh very nice badging for the volunteer there on the back uh it's a little bit um a little bit better than the 1975 badging uh it has a lot of a lot of detail there uh if we come over here to the lone star grills uh you can actually see at the top picture what theirs looks like just a little door slide damper uh, when you're actually looking inside, uh, the fire management basket that Lone Star Grills is uh, so well known for comes standard in this unit. Uh, so, you know, especially having that square firebox at the bottom floor that's as it is, uh, it can be nice to have have all your wood and coals sort of gathered up. Uh, you know, if you have the, the 1975, the curve of the bottom barrel same with the volunteer kind of holds everything together. Um, so that's, that's how you do that in those. But when you don't have that, when you have, you know, these, these square fireboxes, that, uh, that basket can be helpful. Um, so it's, it's, I think it's nice that they include it. All right. One other thing I wanted you to notice is the exit for the smoke and heat in the back here. A uh, very small sort of opening there at the top. And when you remember looking at that picture, this the, this firebox rides a lot higher than these other smokers. So it's kind of butted right up against there. The heat's going to be going and smoke's going to be going straight to the top of that chamber. And we're going to see that a little bit better in another picture soon. I just wanted you to see it here from the back end as well. All right, now protective coating. So... Uh, for the Metal Guys volunteer, it's either clear coat or linseed oil. For the Workhorse Pits, just linseed oil. Now, the difference between clear coat or linseed oil, I'm not entirely sure of. I know that clear coat is more of an automotive thing. Um, so for cars and such, linseed oil came, I believe, from woodworking and, and putting a, a stain or, or coat on wood. You can use either one to coat your... Uh, smoker, and they both have to re be reapplied, from what I understand, uh, periodically. I've reapplied linseed oil to my smoker, uh, so, you know, uh, I, ha I don't have any experience with clear coat. If you do, uh, if you've used both and you want to put a comment down in the comment section, that could be really helpful. Tell us which one is better. For the Lone Star Grills, though, it comes raw. And you have to apply your own oil. You know, you could do linseed oil. If you wanted to, you could get clear coat, I suppose. Or you could do something like beef tallow or, or some other oil. Maybe the same one you coat, coat the inside. You could do the outside. You know, uh, fire that pit up and, and bake it on, so to say, uh, to create the protection that you're looking for. Now, one good thing is I do believe that they paint the cart uh, so that you don't have to do anything with that. 
if that was not the case, uh, I would be, uh, I, it would, it would definitely be a turnoff for me because getting the, the cart to have the linseed oil is in my experience. And, and if you want to see my experience, uh, I have a link up there in the top that that's the difficult part because you have to heat up, uh, the metal in order to get it to, you know, to stain on there. So, but yeah, these are the options for protective coating for these three. All right, so we've got some casters here. Uh, it appears that the metal guys have steel wheels on theirs. Uh, I didn't say explicitly, but that's what it looks like. So works horse pits, they have their new six inch casters. So they finally arrived, retook all the pictures. So when you go to their website, the pictures look a bit different. Now, uh, I think JD, he talks about these, these wheels in one of the interviews I saw on YouTube, but apparently they're really good stuff. Uh, especially for moving across, you know, your backyard surfaces. Somehow they've made the the rubber to be uh, better for that. You know, if that is your situation, and even if you, you don't want to go up to the wagon style, which is another 837, uh, you know, you might be able to make do with these six-inch wheels just because they, they're better wheels, okay? Lone Star Grills, uh, five-inch standard uh, wheels, Eight inches, another 175. Now, when I look at these wheels on the one that they made, I think that they look like the upgraded eight inch. So if you get the five inch standard, they kind of probably look a little bit smaller than that. Their off-road package is a little bit more than uh, Workhorse Pits at 895. All right, now shelves. So metal guys, they really have, have what I like here. They have a fold up shelf fold down shelf and you can see that paper towel holder there uh just another good touch i like that you want your your paper towel out there um so really nice with the shelving there uh the smart shelf side cart i i've if you've ever heard me talk about this uh before you know i really don't like it I don't like that it's so far away from where you want to be with what you're taking out of the smoker or putting in. Uh, having it all the way on the side does not appeal to me. Um, so, you know, uh, maybe it's it's something you like. I don't like it. And I'm going to tell you why they have this side cart. Um, and I, I think the basic reasoning here is that you're going to have to re-add this linseed oil coat. Uh, and I think that when they made it, they didn't want uh, a shelf to obstruct from adding that back on. At least that's the best that I can figure. The other thing is, is that with that economy shipping that they do for workhorse pits, they try to fit in, you know, as many units as they can into this covered trailer. And I don't know if having the shelf out, especially if it didn't fold down, I think that that would have been an issue for that. Uh, you know, this this side cart smart shelf does fold down. I think that, though, that in the future, I hope at least in the future, that they can come up with a shelf that folds down and potentially could be taken off so that you could reapply linseed oil coating more easily that way. Um, you know, it's doable and workhorse pits they put a lot into engineering i think that i think that they could figure this out that's all i'm gonna say there for lone star grills uh they don't have one available so if you get this it uh you know there's no shelf option you just have to pull up your your table or whatever you have now the one thing that i will say is that they have now made it possible for i believe 145 dollars extra to add the smoke collector to any of their other smokers. And I think pretty much all of their other ones do have a fold up and fold down shelf, somewhat similar to, to the metal guys, their shelf. But uh, I think it's, you know, rods that you put in certain places to keep it up. So, you know, if that's what you really want, you really want a shelf, you can look into that option. But for their actual Texas edition, uh, there is no option. And now as well, grilling in the firebox. So not available at all for the metal guys. Uh, extra 120 for the workhorse pits. 
Uh, I like this. I like the access that it gives you in the firebox, especially for a long round one like the Workhorse Pits. So for me, for the metal guys, not having it is kind of a bummer. Uh, but they're they're not offering it right now. Uh, also not available for the Lone Star grills. Again, uh, if you want to do that 145 uh, extra dollars on another one of their smokers, a lot of their smokers do have grilling options in the top. It's in fact one of the things I like the most about Lone Star grills is the way that they have a top grill and griddle system on on their square fireboxes. Anyways, those aren't available for these two smokers. So in my mind, it is a plus for the workhorse pits. All right, engineering. So these two pictures that we have on the left, uh, the metal guys, they put out a TikTok video um, doing a biscuit test. And you see the middle picture is what they did for 225 to 250. You're going to notice the biscuits that they did closest to the firebox are a little bit better done than the other two. Uh, that increases, um, that difference increases when you go to 275 to 300. It's pretty standard for most uh, smokers of this variety, having it be a little bit hotter near the firebox. It looks pretty even though, uh, more even I think than my smoker. So, uh, you know, I think pretty good overall in the evenness of the temperatures. Workhorse Pits has something called computational fluid dynamics. So their smokers are pretty even. Um, if you want more data on that, I would go look up uh, a video from uh, this guy who has a, a channel called Smoke Scouts. Uh, he actually runs the numbers and goes through how to cook a brisket with uh, the damper at certain positions. Now, for all these ones, when you mess with the damper, you're going to be messing with where the heat is and and how the heat gathers in certain parts of the smoker. Uh, so, which may not be true for the Lone Star grills. Uh, it, it's, it's that different. It may not be true for, for that one. Let's take a quick look at the Lone Star grills here. You can see at the very top there that that is uh, the baffle. So, this thing is, hands down, the most different smoker from all the ones that I've compared to the workhorse pits, uh, the heat goes straight up to the top and then comes down. Now, the one thing that might make it hotter on the firebox side is whether there's going to be some radiant heat coming off of that plate for uh, the right-hand side of the smoker, right where the firebox is. Now, if it was double-walled and there was an air gap in there, that would help with that, but I'm not sure if it is or not. If you know, if you have one of these and you know if there's an air gap, uh, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to know. So, all right, trailer option. Um, so, the metal guys, they do have a trailer option. This is not what the trailer would look like. This is another, another one of their smokers that's similar to uh, the Volunteer, but it's a, a good bit longer, I believe. You can see it doesn't have the badging on the end, but this is, you know, what I put in from what they have made that sort of resembles what their trailer might look like. Uh, the 1975T, of course, is an option. Lone Star Grills does not have this option, but again, you know, if you do want one of their trailer options uh, and you want to add the $145, I'm sure they'd make it with a smoke collector. I did an episode on trailers. Uh, and competitors of uh, the 1975T. Uh, I'll link that above if you are interested in having smokers about of this size as trailers. All right, and lastly, we have lead time here. And I think that this has really been the deciding factor for some people. Waiting for a smoker, it's just torture, really. I mean, uh, some guys go crazy. They start like nesting and stuff, you know, <laughs> building, uh, you know, getting their wood rack ready. And it's just crazy sort of stuff. Uh, I guess it's fine, though. But anyways, these are current lead times. They will change. They do change periodically. Right now for the volunteer, it's around four months. For the workhorse pits, around 10 months. And right now for the texas edition lone star grills about one and a half months okay so 
those are the differences. Uh, you know, the best price there, of course, is the workhorse pits, but maybe that's leading into why it is the longest wait. Now, they are building a new campus in which they're going to be able to put out more uh, pits more quickly. And I believe that's going to happen in March of 2023, somewhere around then. And hopefully when that does happen, this uh, lead time will shrink, but it's not there yet. Uh, so, you know, is it worth the wait? That's the question. All right. And here are my thoughts. I think that the workhorse pits is the best bang for your buck. The The wait is a hard one. Um, but I, I do think, you know, the price and the performance and the finish all come together to make a really impressive package. That being said, uh, if you went with the either of these two, I don't think that you would be disappointed in what you get. Uh, you know, that uh, fold-up shelf, you know, the fold-up shelf and the shorter wait time, is that enough to sway you to get the volunteer? Uh, you know, and uh, the, the Lone Star Grails, it has apparently the most space. Uh, I, I don't think it looks particularly attractive, just the silhouette. Uh, you know, it looks like it's butts riding high. <laughs> uh, but I say that, and it probably works really well. It is something of a water smoker. Um, and, you know, a lot of people like that. You can put water in the bottom. I haven't really gone over that. It's, it's one of the differences between it and these other ones. But, you know, if I were going to pick between these three... It would probably be the workhorse pits, uh, just from a cost, uh, cost perspective, and and what you get. So those are my thoughts. You have your own thoughts, I'm sure. Uh, what are your thoughts? Which do you prefer? Please comment below. I love to hear what you have to say, uh, and you know other people probably do too. Do you have experience with these pits? Please, uh, please write a review in the comments. Tell us what you think. All right. Thanks, y'all, and as always, go get your smoke on.